this is an Allosaurus. It's longer than a pickup truck and weighs in at two and a half tons. Five minutes later. Our Allosaurus here is maybe more like 15 tons. What? Jesus Christ, guys. Come on, you still can't be doing this in 2023. Holy shit. Hey, guys, welcome back to another episode of the mic that will apparently never be fixed. But, you know, I digress. Today, we will be looking at the big... The bad, the ugly, and the why the f is this still being aired in 2023 dinosaur documentaries. There are some pretty bad ones, but I'm just going to be looking at some of the worst in history, and I think most will agree. And just for clarifications, the walking with dinosaurs live Perodon will not be on this list. I don't care if it was 500 tons, they said. It was still an iconic documentary that had some inaccuracies, but that was due to lack of fossil evidence in that time, so no, I will not be roasting my legend. Anyway, we're gonna start this off with Godzilla. Yup, nothing like monsters resurrected to turn a real life animal into a goddamn sci-fi kaiju. This is one of the more popular ones as most of you may know, but this thing was so inaccurate and the size, look how it slaps a car car down to source. I think one of the many reasons people were sh** on this documentary was because back then you saw the skeleton. You had ample evidence of what this thing possibly could have looked like. How in God's name do you recreate this thing to look like a JP3 Spinosaurus but upgraded? To keep 8 tons of speeding Spino on track, the monster- No, 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 no. You f made it into a monster because at at least back then there were still some inaccuracies but they never recreated that thing to look like that the only and i mean the only thing they possibly could have gotten right was the weight because he said it was around eight tons while in real life it was around 7.2 7.5 tons eight tons still is more feasible but still everything else is accurate it was not 60 feet long and it didn't look like a JP ripoff. Also, the spine was pretty small in comparison to the animal's actual body. Like, if you look at real life Spinosaurus, its sail takes up a good amount of its height. And also, the other thing is the Carcharodontosaurus. Now, I'm going off good hopes and I'm going to say it was a juvenile Carcharodontosaurus that they showed this thing bitch slapping. But, they probably didn't. And back then, people knew how big Carcharodontosaurus was. It was one of the big three back then, along with the Giga. Ah. Next on the list is the WWE of dinosaur documentaries, Jurassic Fight Club. Now this one, <laughs> this one was pretty horrific on its own. But one good thing I will say that came out of it was the game. Because I remember back then, when I was around... 13, 14, I used to spam this game on my dad's computer when he wasn't there for work and just play it all the time. But under that, yeah, it was it was a very sh** documentary. I'm sorry, there are very few accurate... There was no accurate information. Series of scent marks. They outline boundaries for the juveniles to stay within and for all other dinosaurs to keep out. Most dinosaurs are repelled by this pungent scent and retreat. So right off the back, no dinosaur would walk like that, where it's lifting its hips or back upwards to that degree to walk. If they try to do that and run, their pelvis would shatter under the pressure. Secondly, Nanotyrannus, I guess back then you could lay it off them a little bit because they did thought it was a subspecies, but now we know it was a juvenile Tyrannosaur, not a different damn species. Hissing is a warning. We're not backing down. The fight's on. The Nano Tyrannus hangs own surviving juvenile. Nano sees her giant jaws and sidesteps with his long legs. Now, no goddamn juvenile T Rex was an exact smaller replica of the adult. It at least had to be somewhat skinnier and will excuse the feathers due to the time this was released, but still. It had to be skinnier and more sleek 
for hunting smaller prey at that size. It did not look like an exact replica of the parents. Also, why in God's name is bro ducking and weaving <laughs> with the female Tyrannosaur? What are you trying to do, dog? Like this is so, this is not how real animals behave. If you see something that is three to four times your weight and that can kill and eat you, you would flee. That's what all animals would do. He tries to flank me. If he can move around quickly enough, she cannot respond. He can go in and with his elongated snout, grab the juvenile, shake it in its mouth and kill it and flee. But Nano Tyrannus underestimates his opponent. Fueled by raging levels of adrenaline, she spins and turns, avoiding his flanking move. I'm sorry. How is he still alive after that? T-Rex had the most powerful bite force of any terrestrial animal back then. And it still is up to now. Well, we'll exclude Dinosaurus and Prosaurus because they were more aquatic, but I digress. T-Rex would not just do a mock bite, a little love bite. And its teeth would pierce straight through Nanotyrannus' skull and come out the other side. He would not be alive to jump around and ride in pain. Nanotyrannus doesn't just haphazardly attack. A mouth full of bacteria. Alright, that's so unbelievable. At least it's better than the Spinosaurus lifting up at drops in his jaws and shaking it around. But... You know what, let's go on to the next one. It is the same Jurassic Fight Club, but this one is much, much worse. This is some sci-fi action movie Jurassic Park type. The lion is having a difficult time finding enough food to keep him alive. He's been very lucky that a bison wandered in close enough for him to attack. And he made it vital for the lion because the lion's literally... Go, 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 go! What? Is he a meat gobbler? Jesus Christ, how did he down that in one bite? He's not a Komodo dragon. No modern big cat can do it. I'm sure the only big cat possibly capable of doing this is a Smilodon due to his flexibility. But no, no, I'm wrong. The teeth is an obstruction. They already get the wrong. He's a massive, massive animal and he's very intimidating. The lion normally, this would be enough for him to turn tail and run. But he can't. He cannot afford to leave this prey. There's so much wrong with this. His survival instincts won't allow him to turn tail and run. They're treating this like they're robots or something. Most animals, especially like I'm, I'm a tiger fan. I'll admit this. If you put a fully grown polar bear against a Siberian tiger, and it stands on its high legs, more likely the tiger is going to turn tail and run. It has to be extremely hungry to even confront the bear. At the moment the bear bit across the tiger, bites its leg, it's going to run. It's not going to continue fighting to the death, more than likely, unless it's really, really, really desperate. And this lion this thing doesn't look that desperate. It seems to have a full tummy. Why would it risk injury to this degree? Later on in the fight, you'll see even more crazy shit. The Mega Bear will actually use wrestling moves in a fight, including trying to pin an opponent. This will render it harmless with the lowest risk of injury. He grabs the Mega Lion by the midsection, crunches down, cracking and breaking ribs, and then... The bear's attention is clearly on the bison. That lion is supposed to be down, or at least mortally wounded. It is not supposed to just get up and return to the fight. Okay. The one case that I have seen, or one of few that I have seen that is somewhat similar to this, was an extremely, and I mean extremely desperate male lion versus a mature K buffalo. Both were extremely wounded. I think the lion got his ass but keep getting up despite, I think, a broken hind leg. And he kept on going, but the buffalo eventually won, but more likely he's, he's going to be dead too because of the injuries because he took a lot of beating too. But that's between predator and prey. Two predators going at it like this, both have to be starving and they might want to eat each other because I doubt two predators would fight like this over prey. The roar would seem as loud as an oncoming train. Alliance scores a direct hit to the face of the bear. They should call this Jurassic Olympics because god damn that cave lion has some badass moves. 
With the last remaining strength, he lunges towards the bear. The force of the impact knocks the bear backwards and the lion grabs the throat. The lion needed almost 40 pounds of meat a day to survive. Without it, the mega lion would quickly weaken. To regain his footing and towers over its rider, it throws the 750 pound mega lion with little effort. Even if this is a cave bear and it has a lot of loose skin and fat, it would, with the sustained damage it took, it would not be able to pull off the lion that much. Just grab it and give it a bear hug and throw it in the other direction. That bear is supposed to be dead. Well, to be fair, the lion is supposed to be dead a long time ago too, but, you know, Jurassic Fight Club, most accurate documentary in mankind, but these are older documentaries. I could possibly forgive them because as a young dude they were quite entertaining but this this has no excuse why are you documenting this shit in 2023 but how does a docile dumbo like a diplodocus it's very unfair to call it a dumbo how does it defend itself against this kind of slashing machine well i think primarily by just being really enormous so this is an animal that's maybe 30 or 40 tons Whereas our Allosaurus here is maybe more like 15 tons. So it's gonna be really hard for it to take down an adult Diplodocus like this. What? What the fuck? Ah yes, the 15 ton Allosaurus. Never mind that since early last year, T-Rex was confirmed to be the largest at 11 tons the max, like the largest specimen, which is like, like Scotty or something. Nope. We have a 35 foot long theropod that was somehow 15 tons. How? Uh, moving on. There are no flowers. They haven't evolved yet. Yeah, he was right. No flowers or fruits have evolved at that time. <laughs> I guess I was wrong. Never mind, there were only conifers at that time. I guess they had. What are these? Tul tulips? I, I don't know. If I'm sorry, what, what are the purple flowers called? Oh, he's off. If you can't fly, run. This isn't Jurassic Park with the Indominus and the Apatosaurus. A two-ton theropod isn't going to attack a 15 to 20 ton animal. Just like that, even in Walking with Dinosaurs, despite its fairly outdated information, still a go-to documentary and my favorite to this day, it showed that one of the Allosaurus had to target a smaller female. It would never go for a large adult. And the moment the large adult slapped it, it walked away. A dangerous, magical place, ruled by terrifying creatures, the dinosaurs. What, what, what's this? What's this? You're not going to rip off my favorite PC game just because you can't make your own <laughs> models. Even if they should have used at least the newer TLC of the Stegosaurus. What in God's name is that? And why does it have six Stagomizers? As for this. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, what is that? It's a goddamn Kaiju. That's not a dinosaur. And it's the exact same one as the Titanosaur from Ark. There was another one. Ah, yes, the Pteranodon. If we compare him to our Jurassic era predator, the Allosaurus, those teeth are really thin and sharp. Ah, yes, the 15 ton predator comes forth next to the 11 ton but much more bulky and taller predator. Uh, Let's continue. If you can't fly, run. <laughs> well, a successful kill. All right, hold on. So not only did this T-Rex headbutt a ten-ton animal to the ground, even though it has more stability than the T-Rex, 
It also grabs his leg and shakes the entire body like a rag. Doll. Now, don't get me wrong. T-Rex was extremely powerful. The most powerful terrestrial carnivore ever to exist, except for Porosaurus and Dinosaurus. But it was the most powerful besides them. The other thing is, how in God's name did it create a fatal blow by just biting it to his leg? And T-Rex wasn't one of those predators who just waited for their prey to bleed out. Triceratops is smaller than T-Rex. I beg your pardon? He's nose to tail about nine meters and stands three meters high. And when it comes to bulk, Triceratops is a real heavyweight, weighing in at a hefty six tons. Ah! I'm a killer! Ooh, kill him! Ooh, kill him! What? He's got to be talking about a female specimen or a really small specimen because why are they using so much outdated data? Bro, you could look on Google. No, not Google because some, some pages are. Anyway, you could look on Google and some reliable sources will tell you that the minimum weight for Triceratops horridus is at least 7 to 8 tons. It, the largest specimen, I think it's Big John. There's another one, I can't remember. But Big John is the largest one. I think he has an estimated 11 to 12 ton weight range. Bro, how the f*** is Triceratops only 6 tons? Look at the size comparison next to that T-Rex. You're telling me that thing is only 6 tons? Of catastrophe is about to strike. And it's a scene of complete devastation for our dinosaurs here. Goofy ass bite pattern. I don't care how big your wig span is, you're gonna have to put at least a bit more effort to keep your body of that size and proportion in the air. I understand you can soar for like hours and stuff, but why why are you flying like a freaking flappy bird character? What the f is it? you know what? Guys, this is gonna end off this episode today. There are some more documentaries, but this will just take too long, so I'll do a part too soon. Yes, I know the mic is still bad. Maybe in the next video, I'll maybe get a new mic. I probably won't. I, I, I won't, but I, I'll try, you know. But, you know, subscribe for more, guys. I'll see you in the next one. I'm at the